Assault rifles are some of the most versatile and even sometimes most explosive guns in Cyberpunk 2077. I looked at all of them so you don't have to and to figure out which of course are best. Though granted this is a strong set of weapons across the board and there's benefits to even the lowest ranked here. So let's get straight to it. The build I mostly used for this video is predominantly reflexes based of course, air dash and the AR perks being crucial with salt in the wound a cool endgame bonus. This central body tree will also help us stay alive whilst tech perks will boost our cyberware and heals. No tech assault rifles so this node isn't needed but I did equip the basic smart perks for the few relevant guns. Cool you can keep down at just 4 attributes only occasionally using the stealth perks but do make sure to get vulnerability analytics from the relic tree. Cyberware is similar to my shotgun build, a chrome compressor based high armor auto healing loadout to again have a hope of surviving on very hard. Though for AR specifically, make sure to also equip Korenzikov. It's so so useful with many of these to steady up our aim and get better headshots and such. Plus it gels great with the abilities of certain guns, which I think it's high time we got onto. Described as a cheap and cheerful AR within the cyberpunk canon, the Umbra actually does better than it sounds, though to be fair it's not actually that cheap either. High ammunition, fast rate of fire and pretty decent handling are all major perks here, though it's also one of the lowest damage ARs on the list, and its cheap design makes attaching a scope impossible, limiting it to somewhat mid-range. Pick up the spec from the Northside weapon vendor, or if you want to circumvent all expenditure, make a beeline for Terra Cognita in Dogtown. Through this secret passage up here and pick up the Xmod 2 variant. Higher damage, range and far superior handling comes at the expense of 25% less ammo with this model, though the trade-off is easily worth it in my opinion, especially given the ability to overwrite equipped mods. One of my favourite ways to use this gun is by reducing all recoil with the ready steady mod and the shock absorber or immovable force cyberware, transforming it into a low damage high accuracy beam rifle, or alternatively just shoot at the floor with critache and pretend you're bullseye. Ironically, it's actually still kind of easier to be accurate with this method, and the faster firing nature of this gun in general make it a great pairing with Korenzikov I've found, as you can get off plenty of shots during the time slow. A bit weak for early game perhaps, but once you have the Xmod 2 model, a stronger contender this definitely is. Whilst real life weapons generally aren't a thing in this game, the D5 Copperhead does serve as the honorary successor to the AK-47, and much like that famous gun, the Copperhead is simply an effective way to unload a ton of lead very quickly. Slightly slower firing than the Umbra, but with greater damage, range and the ability to add a scope, this is just about my preferred choice of the two similar guns, and nosing ahead because it's a fairly common drop throughout the early game. Easy to acquire straight from the get go, and reliable to use, make it not one I'd look to trade out for a small while at least, though as a player with a tendency to get more up close and personal, I might eventually upgrade to the Barguest version, with less range but an even faster rate of fire and most importantly a magazine capacity of 50, placing it somewhat near the realm of LMGs as an effective spray and pray weapon. Just watch that ammo count though, because it'll tear through bullets faster than you can restock them, even in 2.1 where ammo recovery got a huge buff. It shares the feeling of an AK from other shooters but works especially well with Korenzikov too, so I'd highly recommend grabbing that early to use with the Copperhead. If eventually you want to craft your own basic version though, the spec is dropped by Bruce Ward at the suspected crime here in Rocky Ridge, so again, I'd personally favour the Barguest version. Whilst the basic Mazamune was my number one AR back in 1.6, today it's not really near that, though as you'll later find out it doesn't need to be. A decent weapon, don't get me wrong, favoured by corporate security and scoring the highest handling out of all the assault rifles, but with a slower fire rate and exceptionally slowed even clunky feeling reload speed sometimes, this gun can make you feel a little bogged down in combat, though it is easier to acquire than its predecessor the Nawaki. Head to the Japantown weapon vendor for the crafting spec. But given top tier versions of both the Mazamune and the Nawaki can be found as of 2.0, this is actually the weaker of the two guns, marginally. And personally, the indescribable feel I got when using the Mazamune was actually just about inferior. Just. Though canonically it is still the flagship weapon of Arasaka, with all the high quality modern bells and whistles, and even works underwater in the lore. Not an actual feature in this game sadly, but perhaps something for Orion. Do I still enjoy using it? Of course and the triple burst precision is fantastic, though it's purely down to the stiff competition of this list that it doesn't rank higher. 
The only basic and moddable smart assault rifle is the D5 Sidewinder, canonical successor to the Copperhead, so think of it as a smart targeting AK. Whilst it doesn't work so well in my chrome compressor build, Copperhead is easily better if you can be accurate enough. Smart weapons sit more in their own little corner as of 2.0, with all smart weapon perks existing in the intelligence tree alongside Cyberdex. A net gunner build is really the optimum place in which to use this and can synergize brilliantly. Headhopper is a mod tougher to come by, but can increase our lock-on targets and lock-on speed, resulting in a gun with near instantaneous smart targeting. Still not quite beneficial enough to beat its iconic variant, but it is something, and if that's what you'd prefer, then pick up the crafting spec from Rancho Coronado. And of course, you'll want to also equip the Smart Link Cyberware. Two good cyber decks to pair with it are the Militech Paraline and Raven Microcyber, optimized for net gunning and splash damage combat respectively. But I'll leave full-on optimum cyber deck builds for another video. Only thing to watch here, same as the Copperhead, is the ammo counts, especially given several bullets have a tendency to miss. It does fire enough of them to not be too noticeable in general combats, though that is until you've depleted them totally. Arasaka's Nawaki is an older gun, but it checks out, an honorary predecessor to the Burst Fire Mazamune, and operating in a very similar fashion, with reductions in speed, range, and handling, albeit greater damage and a 25% greater headshot multiplier than its successor. This is, arguably, and in my opinion, the superior alternative for the more skilled players amongst us. Less user-friendly, of course, being older, but technically taking out enemies in fewer shots. There's a reason, after all, that this gun is still common amongst Arasaka security, and it hasn't been entirely replaced. It's a similar situation to the Tame Yura pistol in fact, and perhaps it's the age of Saburo himself being the reason that Arasaka maintained such sentiment for older models of weapon. Not that it's the simplest thing to come by, and indeed no crafting spec for the Nawaki can be found. Instead, you'll have to loot pre-built models from around the place, or else just find them at weapon vendor stores. I found mine at Rancho Coronado. It's also the only AR for which no iconic variant exist, but this at least means it can be modded. As a fairly steady burst fire already, I'd say recoil reduction is less necessary here, and personally chose to use Critache and Pyro for mods. The slower firing but fully automatic Ajax Next is a rifle manufactured by Militech, which has a feeling of favouring power over precision. To permanently unlock crafting for this one, buy the spec from Westwind Estate, or alternatively, there is a bar guest variant available around Dogtown, which favours yet more power still, significantly more power, to the further detriment of range and handling, as well as a third of the ammo capacity. Worth it, potentially, but more for players with a tendency to get up close and personal than those who maintain a distanced tactful guile. And for such a heavy weapon, the Ajax boasts some of the best handling of all the ARs. Not quite the best, the Mazamune's got that one, but most accurate for those not a fan of burst fire. And of course, its non-iconic mediocrity does at least open the gate for mod slots. There's a couple ways you can go here, I'd say, and again, it depends on your playstyle. For longer range shooters, I'd recommend Ready Steady to hone that aim, whereas for users of the Barghest version, doubling down on explosive power can be highly effective using the Firecracker Chimera mods if you're dead set on power being your main weapon type. Mind you, unlike shotguns where mods are so good as to actually place moddable guns above Iconics, the Iconic Ajax variants fare a little better, so I'd consider maybe saving those mods for now. Since the Sidewinder gets a poison-based iconic, which we'll come to, the Copperhead gets something similar, only it's more about fire. Entirely about fire, in fact, right down to the skin and the name. Psalm 11.6 is a biblical reference saying, quote, Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. End quote. And with explosive rounds alongside a 30% burn chance, yeah, you've got yourself a tempest of fire, all right. And it's really only the explosive rounds and burn burning aspects that make it stand out, though you can achieve something very similar by slapping both a pyro and firecracker mod on a regular copperhead, though this one looks cooler, and it saves on having to acquire the mods. Bearing in mind, crafting firecracker comes at the expense of the other chimera mods, all of which are very good too. With explosive rounds, you do however lose the ability to ricochet bullets, though given this gun's exceptional mag capacity of 50 very fast firing bullets, missing one or two which don't then ricochet ain't the end of the world. 
acquire the crafting spec from the body of Tom Ayer, a maelstromer who you'll fight during the suspected crime Just Say No up in Northside. Definitely the superior Copperhead model, I would say, albeit still bogged down by the noticeably weaker base shots than other ARs, which are at least somewhat offset by the engulfing flames that follow. Firing singular, semi-automatic rounds, the Kobe is a gun of precision, and with an increased headshot multiplier, it begins to tend down the route of pistol or precision rifle style of play, though still benefiting of course from the AR reflex perks. For anyone wanting to play a stealthier assault rifle user, you'll be hard pressed to find a more fitting base gun than this. Whilst it can't one-tap enemies from stealth on very hard, it can take them down before getting detected, so the best model to run with of this if you're going down the stealth route is the the XMOD 2, with bonus damage, handling, and an even greater headshot multiplier of 150%. Not to mention the ability to slot relevant mods like Pax or Equalizer. Find this particular one in Dogtown down the bottom of a well near the Golden Pacific fast travel. It's probably the most decent bet to do anyway, as this model doesn't even have a crafting spec. And if you're wanting to go the non-stealth route instead, I'd recommend the Barguest variant, as that one is oriented more towards all the non-stealth aspects. Greater armor penetration and most importantly a slightly higher rate of fire. Slap on pyro, critache or firecracker and you have one explosive punch of a gun. Granted there's better iconic variants to suit both stealth and guns blazing styles of play for the Kyubi, so again it really comes down to a question of using mods or not. Only issue with this gun is that it does demand greater accuracy, with each shot being slower and far more precious. Plus it lacks the firing speed to utterly light up enemies running towards you, so be prepared to have to dash backwards sometimes. Speaking of the superior Kyubi, when it comes to an explosive guns blazing approach, this is it. Chinook was yet another twitch drop red iconic, which can now just be looted randomly from airdrops or potentially bought from Herald at the stadium. It's basically identical in stats to the standard Bargas variants, but has the added bonus of increasing movement speed after every kill by up to 20%. This in turn increases damage dealt by up to 25%, provided you're moving at said higher speeds. A lot of the twitch drops sport this same ability, including the Crusher variant Amstaff, which I covered in Shotgun Ranked, so it's worth collecting them all to make up a loadout for a certain gameplay style, as well as the Umbra variant Carmen, which we'll come to. But whilst I think Kyubi is one of the best base AR models, the special ability gels least well with this gun. Since Kyubi is semi-auto, running at enemies while spraying lead isn't quite so straightforward, and is more demanding on your aim. This can be counteracted somewhat by the use of Korenzakov, but even still, speed Speedily darting towards foes to get your damage up is significantly easier with automatic fire. Though granted, this one does pack greater effective range if you're happy to strafe from a distance. A high maintenance but potentially devastating iconic variant of the Umbra now, Carmen secures this spot thanks to the madly satisfying style of play that it encourages. Statistically, the Carmen beats the regular Umbra, but not quite the Xmod 2. Despite this, I'd still argue it's better than both, with Barghast modifications increasing both our handling and damage when running, sliding or jumping, as well as increased bleed chance and crit chance specifically on enemy limbs. To optimise using this then, here's what I'd recommend. It's essentially the perfect thing to pair with Karenzakov, since that's activated by some form of dash, increasing the time window for which to shoot this gun at its maximum power. And the extra inflicted damage during this was highly noticeable to me. Brilliant too against mechs, and especially the guys in those laser suits. It's literally a run and gun weapon for a high reflex build, but may not reap the full benefits outside of this style. Indeed, if again wanting a more standstill beam rifle, I'd refer back to the Umbra X mod too. But this one though, you'll have to complete the balls to the wall side quest, and depending on how that ends, Paco will either gift us the gun as thanks, or it'll show up at Heralds in the stadium. I break down the outcomes of that quest in my Worst Decisions Phantom Liberty video. So Pitbull is in the same class of Iconics as the Chinook, and similarly acquired from Airdrops, though this one I'd say noses just ahead due to it being an Ajax variant which are by nature faster firing at the expense of reduced range. I got on much better dashing around with automatic gunfire in the same way I did with Carmen. You'll have to get a little more up close and personal to achieve maximum effectiveness, and the reload is a little slow, which can potentially be problematic, but other than that, this weapon just gets more effective the 
more enemies you take down with it. Especially if you unlock the vulnerability analytics relic perks and target the little diamonds of EMP potential. Not a lot more to say on this one. Pair it with Chinook to get speed and damage boosts from all distances, but personally this is the one I'd find myself using most often. Are you a big fan of not having to really aim much, as well as big clouds of green smoke? Well, then this is probably the perfect gun for you. Well, one of them. Divided We Stand may no longer be the best chemical assault rifle in 2077, which is crazy by itself, but it's still highly effective. Statistics-wise, it is pretty much identical to an unmodified Sidewinder of the same quality, taking nothing away and adding a couple things. Firstly, an ability to simultaneously target up to five enemies, a splash damage gun if ever there was one, and this synergizes great with the poison damage and fairly high chance to detonate a huge poison cloud, finishing off anyone unlucky enough to be caught within. In fact, a good gameplay strategy is if one of these go off, stop firing in its vicinity and shoot somewhere else. Everyone inside will probably be dead by the time the smoke clears anyway. A brilliantly unique piece of kit whose effects on the battlefield are easily recognizable, at least prior to 2.0. But who would devise such a toxic device? Why, of course, the Leadheads of 6th Street. And to get this one, come to the edge of Rancho Coronado to find the Stadium Love Quest, a shooting competition for which this is the main prize. You don't have to win to get the gun, but be prepared for a pretty big fight if you don't. A perfect time, in fact, to test out what your new weapon can do. Is it the best smart assault rifle? Well, kind of, but not entirely. Whilst the Moron Larbe can't quite compete with the raw damage of the Pitbull, this fan favourite is still better than that new gun in my opinion, though only if used correctly. I began to notice, as I used it more, that the fire rate was indeed uneven, as described, though not unpredictably so. See, aiming down the sights results in a far slower fire rate, whereas getting up closer and hip firing, the rate will actually increase. So whilst you can still aim and fire, indeed it's not too slow as to ruin that means of using the gun, it's certainly not the optimized way of doing it. And couple the optimized hip fire with the massive increase to dismemberment chance, and you get one destructive mess of a gun. Kind of like the guts of assault rifles. And with each dismemberment, our crit chance will temporarily increase too. It is, as always, looted from Anton Kolev down here in Westwind Estates, and with the skull decals, you could even pretend to be the Punisher. The violent scenes that this will inflict do in fact remind me of Daredevil Season 2 and the subsequent spin-offs that follow. Whilst the name itself, Moron Labe, is a wordplay on Moron Labe, which is what Leonidas said to Xerxes after being asked to surrender the Spartan weapons, meaning come and take them. A gun of vicious defiance then, for a voraciously violent vendetta vanquishing V. Just remember to try and stick to hip fire for best results. Easily the best Kyubi variant, in my opinion, and one of the best guns in the game, Hawk was the personal weapon of President Rosalind Myers. And just like Madam Prez, it's especially tailored to royally screw over everyone around it in such a way that nobody realizes it's happening until it's too late. Hitting an enemy with Hawk applies a string of 15 second debuffs, slowing their movement speed by a whole 50%, disabling Sandeviston and Kerenzikov, which is a godsend against certain bullet dodging foes, reducing their damage, increasing their stamina cost, and finally reducing their balance, making it potentially good to pair with shotguns or revolvers. Granted, all these things aren't necessarily as noticeable as the perks of other guns like just straight up setting people on fire, but tagging all visible enemies as soon as you see them will make fights run a lot smoother. The single shot semi-auto might not be quite as enjoyable in open combat as faster firing weapons depending how you play, but Hawk fares best in a different realm too, with an increased headshot multiplier making it the best stealth AR in the entire game. After all, Rosalind needs a weapon ready for all situations, and picking off assailants one by one whilst simultaneously weakening them is a useful strategy when pinned down in a crashed Space Force 1 say. Convenience, as it happens. Why she leaves it behind at our Dogtown hideouts, I couldn't say for certain. A little reward for us perhaps? A new one for her after all, surely can't be that hard to come by, whilst this one will be propped up here by the entrance. One of the easiest to acquire in game, and I'd recommend keeping it around for any gun builds, just in case you come across an annoying Sandy user.
There's a number of synergizing weapon pairs in this game. Satori and Nihan, Bald Eagle and Fang, but probably the best for me are Rogue's Pride and Prejudice. A Liberty Pistol and Mazamune AR duo, which are such powerful, high-ranking members of their respective classes, it's just insane. Maybe given both are only available after completing the Sun ending. After all, they are both endgame weapons by definition. Pride I covered in Pistol's ranks, and it was the easiest number one I've ever decided. Prejudice, on the other hand, is everything I complained the base Mazamune wasn't, with increased damage, handling, and range making it easily the best burst fire AR. By itself, fire rate increases at low health, and recoil goes down. The first hit is always critical, and crit damage is a whopping 100% greater, whilst damage to skull level enemies is increased too. That's good enough to take this to a top tier gun by itself, but clearly the game is pushing you towards a particular style of play that's even better. See, every time we neutralize an enemy with pride, switching to Prejudice means it consumes no ammo for 5 seconds, and vice versa getting a kill with Prejudice too. Essentially, you'll save a ton of ammo switching weapons after every kill, whilst also ensuring more guaranteed crit hits. All in all, this is an absolute power couple of a weapon set, but don't even need pairing to utterly excel. It's the only Mazamune that recaptures the feeling of using the gun in 1.6 for me, and therefore it's only fitting that it takes its rightful place here on the list. Number 2. Yes, but as you'll soon see, it could also be technically number one. Additionally, it's also just a fantastic excuse to play the sun ending, as opposed to Don't Fear the Reaper for the 77th time. There appears to be a recurring tendency amongst several classes of weapon, but one standout, bombastically explosive iconic. SMGs have the Arebus, shotguns have the Bezing Chong, whilst ARs have this. The Hercules 3 ax is a late-game Phantom Liberty gun found during Roads to Redemption, one of the final gigs set at the stadium, which itself only unlocks after making the biggest choice near the end of the expansion. It's often a little side room of the area we break into for the gig, so make sure not to miss it as we cannot come back here. Whilst it is a smart weapon by all accounts, it basically has a smart link built in, not therefore requiring the cyberware, and thus still proving a brilliant option outside of a conventional smart gun build. Basically, the Hercules has it all. In a similar way to the Moron Labe, hipfire will be far more rapid, and whilst targeting isn't smart here, the explosive rounds and assistance of the rangefinder means it doesn't at all need to be. In fact, the only reason I ever use the smart aim function is to take advantage of the multi-targeting when faced up against multiple opponents. Every shot has the sound of firing a grenade launcher, and that's because we practically are. Only it's a grenade launcher with a humongous 90-round magazine. Upon killing an enemy, things get even crazier, and Divided We Stand is sadly going to have to move over for the new king of poison guns. Enemies erupt into a bigger, bolder, and more damaging cloud, which cannot be good for this already utterly screwed environment. In fact, the reason this gun isn't publicly available yet, this is a prototype that we stole, is because the poison rounds are just too poisonous, and a potential health risk to the wielder in the cannon I guess. It doesn't feel entirely fair placing it at the top, given how it functions so differently to the other ARs, so if you want, you can call Prejudice the honorary victor and put this in a different league entirely. Where Prejudice does beat this in fact is the ammunition problem. Firing huge magazines rapidly fast means running out of ammo almost definitely in the crazy big fights. I'm talking the times you decide to summon max tack for fun. In fact, that's been a general problem that I've had with ARs across the board, but it was particularly prominent here. Though the fact it couldn't keep it away from top spot still is testament to Hercules' ridiculous o penis. Okay, I really need to stop abbreviating that. Hercules' ridiculous overpoweredness. So what do you think? Hercules, Prejudice, Hawk, or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments, and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the rest of the rankings. Big love, as always, to the patrons for keeping this channel alive, and thank you, of course, for watching. I'm Sam Bram, and I'll see you in the next one.